Hey everybody, welcome back to Discover Spring Ford. I'm standing on Main Street in Royers Ford Borough in front of the Royers Ford office for Pennsylvania State Senator Katie Muth. Today I'm going to be sitting down to discuss her backstory and her unlikely path to the Pennsylvania State Senate. I'm Jeff Desiato, a professional actor, part-time realtor, and transplant to the Spring Ford area. And I'm on a mission to find the best that Spring Ford has to offer. I'll be interviewing local business owners, civil servants, and other prominent members of the community to find out what makes Spring Ford a great place to live, work, eat, and explore. I invite you to join me on my journey as I discover Spring Ford. Senator, thank you so much for allowing me to come in today. I know you have a busy schedule, and I appreciate you making time for Discover Spring Ford. Absolutely. Thanks yeah. for coming in. Um, so, as I do on most episodes, I like to hear about the people's personal stories and what inspires them to do what they do, either for a living or in their free time um, or their volunteer work. Um, so I'm going to let you kind of take the reins and let people know, uh, tell people about your upbringing and um, what your background is before you got into um, government. Sure. So I'm a newcomer to okay. the government. I was just elected in November 2018. Um, I grew up in a working class family. Um, I'm not personally wealthy. I was raised by a single dad after my mom passed away. So okay. I grew up not knowing um, my parents really struggled to make ends meet, mm. but I had a great family. And even after my mom passed away, having aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas pitch in um, to make sure that my brother and I had a good life, I'm very grateful that you know I was able to attend college and get a master's degree with the help of student loans. Um, because it's difficult for right. one parent to pay, you know, tuition for two kids um, to go to Penn State, as my dad learned. So um, I really got into um, government because of my background in sports medicine. So I used okay. to be an athletic trainer. Um, I've worked in the NFL. I've worked oh, in really? Division One football. I've worked in low-income high schools um, in Phoenix when I was in grad school. So I've seen um, the different stages of, you know, athletics. I've worked with men's teams, women's teams. And I've also taught, so I, t I taught anatomy um, okay. before I was elected and, and worked at um, Eastern University, so I was um, an athletic trainer there as well. So um, I've dealt a lot with you know, musculoskeletal injuries, concussions, um, return to learn, things like that. Mm -hmm. So healthcare is a huge um, component of my job, not just from providing it, but also dealing with insurance companies. Sure. So I slowly learned the hard way how to um, battle Medicaid coverage from out of state student athletes to negotiating prices of knee braces yeah. <laughs> that weren't covered or that were part of a deductible and just how unfair that system was. So um, when I was in grad school, I was it was before the Affordable Care Act had passed. So I couldn't stay on my father's insurance to have health insurance mm -hmm. and you had to have it um, where I went to grad school. So. I paid out of pocket for it, and as a grad assistant, I made $8,000 a year, and that pretty much uh, covered what I yeah. needed. And pre-existing conditions, um, I was born with a cataract, okay. so I had a pre-existing condition, and so I really just started to see the landscape of how unfair, it's a wealth care system, not a health care system, sure. and what's evidence-based medicine, like it's patient-centered care. And there's some really great doctors out there that would love to provide that, but they're you know, held to a quota, provide this many appointments, do this many referrals to specialists. So the system itself was so flawed. So yeah. um, that really, in addition to gender inequality in my profession, um, like I mentioned, I did work in higher level sports, yeah. higher profile sports, but to get a full-time job in that setting, um, you usually have to be a man. Um, okay. I was the first uh, woman from Penn State as, a, as an athletic training <laughs> student to get an NFL internship. I, I oh, did an wow. internship with the Pittsburgh Steelers and at the time they were one of the only the only team that had a woman on their staff full time and then also took female interns. Wow. So and that was just in two thousand and ten. So okay. it's not that long ago. No, not that long ago at all. <laughs> so for me, I seeing what um, your paycheck could be versus working in a high school setting um, you know, it's a huge, huge difference. Sure. So that also, um, that inequality um, frustrated me. Mm. So as I began to do a little bit of um, activism uh, in the community, I started to see, you know, really how government impacts these regular decisions, sure. including health care, equal pay, all these things, uh, and how the people calling the shots are really, um, you know, they've lived a privileged life. It's a very uh, whitewashed, um, older man, you know, population that gets elected or that is in office. And, 
you know, Pennsylvania used to be one of the worst states in the nation for women in government. Mm -hmm. I think we're now a little bit higher after this past 2018 election. Mm -hmm. There's more women that got elected, but it's not just about women. It's people of color. It's people from all diverse backgrounds, because if you've never been in the struggle, how do you make laws to help and protect people um, if you really don't know? Um, and so I am grateful that voters saw that I could be that voice and, mm. and come into Harrisburg and have these these sometimes difficult conversations with even legislators in my own party about sure. what regular families are dealing with. Um, we have great health care in the Senate. Um, people don't worry about those types of things. You know, you have great retirement pensions, even for just employees, you know, so those aren't guarantees for every other Pennsylvanian. So for me, it's really about how do we make sure those same securities are afforded to everyone else, not just government. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a very, you know, some very uh, on the ground experiences that you had that informed your decision making and, and how you decided to move forward. Um, do you mind if I ask how old you were um, when you uh, lost your mom and, sure. and what that um, what that did just in terms of because I also was raised by a single mom. Um, my dad still alive and we have a good relationship now. Um, but uh, at what point? Uh, did you see that? Because obviously you're, you said your father, you know, it was keeping it from you guys, obviously, like not, you weren't really privy to the fact that you were struggling until later when you look back and you're like, oh my goodness, like how are you making this work? Um, at what point did you start to really come aware um, of the, the effects of the single parent home? So even before my mom passed away, I was 11. Okay. Um, so she had a brain aneurysm. She died very suddenly. Oh, sorry. So, oh. um, and it sort of shook the whole family. Yeah, she was imagine. the keystone of the family. And so my dad had to quickly learn how to cook and balance the checkbook sure. and pack lunches and do yeah. all these things that maybe he might have helped with, but wasn't the main you know person course, doing them. Yeah. So. Um, my dad was a, a stunner. He figured out pretty quick how to do a lot of that stuff. Um, I, I give him credit. He, uh, any gray hair he has, I've certainly gave it to him, <laughs> not my older brother. Um, yeah. And, you know, for me, even before my mom passed away, you know, my mom, she went to college, so she was a nutritionist. She worked at WIC. Um, my dad did not. He worked since he was 16, um, went to, um, like, uh, machine tool and die trade yeah. school out of high school. And um, so... My mom also waitressed before uh, Macy's was Kaufman's and Kaufman's oh, had a okay. restaurant. So my yeah. mom waitressed there during high school and then also still did it um, part time when my brother and I were growing up. Wow. So um, we got really good deals on clothes because she still got the <laughs> discount. But so working 1.5 jobs, you know, raising two kids with my dad who worked full time. You know, there were times where, again, my grandparents bought my mom a dishwasher for her birthday yeah. and she returned it so that we could buy new winter coats for me and my brother. So oh, things wow. like that yeah. that I didn't really see then yeah. as being such a big deal. Um, and again, I had grandparents who luckily lived down the street from me. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they watched me for the half day that I wasn't in kindergarten. And not every family has that, right? So right. Um, my dad definitely... Um, you know, he got a better job after my mom passed away, so it wasn't as difficult from the standpoint. But then as you head into college, there's no way yeah, right. to be prepared, um, no matter how much you save. And and I have no problem paying back student loans. Yeah. I am right now. But yeah. <laughs> when you have an interest rate that's, you know, 7 8%, um, you know, you've ended up borrowing so much more oh, sure. than you, yeah. you know, or paying back so much more than you actually borrowed. Um, that you know, we give corporations one percent loans and um, interest on loans, and you know, here we are giving students these you know debt sentences. That when you, as a master's um, you know educated person, I made thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars before I was elected to the state senate. So <laughs> my husband and I are frugal. He also is an athletic yeah. trainer. We cut coupons, you know. Yeah. But you know, it's it's having those opportunities and i think you know realizing as a young kid my family really helped make sure that i had those opportunities yeah. and my mom was my you know girl scout troop leader and things like that so certainly after she passed away it was a shift but mm. you know my dad um you know my dad and i are still very very close he's, cool. he's the new uh, government watchdog he's, <laughs> he's, he lives in uh, western pennsylvania okay. west, in westmoreland county so he'll call me and He's like, what's the vote on Sunday hunting? And what's the, you know, like, so he's, you know, he's he's definitely more engaged. Now. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah, like uh, with with parents, especially, I feel like your kids, like once your kids take an interest in something, you become the expert in that thing because you're trying to support them and everything. For I sure. know way more about Minecraft 
than I probably ever thought I would <laughs> or care to. Uh, but uh, I still don't know anything. My kids are going on and on about something and that's all. Uh, yeah, and they, yeah. that obviously doesn't have the same ramifications as government, even though they are building worlds there. Yeah, they are. Uh, <laughs> they're practicing yeah. anyway. So yeah. um, is, are you for originally from the Western Pennsylvania yep, area? Yeah, so I grew up in Delmont, Pennsylvania, okay. outside of Monroeville. So my dad currently lives in Greensburg, which is right on the edge of Delmont. So. Okay. And uh, how long have you been in this general area? Like so Eastern, South after Eastern I graduated PA? high school, I went to Penn State, okay. and then I went to grad school in Arizona, and then when I moved back from Arizona, I've been here now almost six years. Okay. Yeah. And you moved to this... I live in Rivers. You live in Rivers. Yes, I live right so. down by the river. <laughs> what made you pick... Down by the river. Yeah. So, uh, so what made you pick, uh, if you don't mind me asking, it could have just been like, oh, the work or whatever, but like, what made you set up shop here in Royersford. So my husband and I, um, when I was finishing grad school, both worked together at a high school in Phoenix as athletic trainers, and then the contract had ended, so we had to find new jobs, and there's um, not a lot of jobs in Arizona, just because there's less universities. Right. And um, so we, his family's from the East Coast as well, my family's mostly here, so we really tried to come back here and look for jobs. So um, he actually ended up finding a job at Villanova, and I also worked there briefly um, with the women's basketball team for a little bit before okay. I went to Eastern. But that's why we ended up coming out this way. So okay. my brother had lived in Philadelphia as well. So. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, I'm a, as you probably know, I'm a relatively new to this area. I grew up in Philadelphia, which is not that far, obviously. Yeah. But um, I didn't come from the other side of the state or from Arizona. Uh, I've always lived within like a one hour radius of Philadelphia. But um, yeah, it's been it's been cool to kind of hear the different stories of the people that I've been interviewing. Some people are like lifelong residents of the Royal Sword area. Others are, you know, from Chester County or Delaware County, and they've all kind of migrated here. Um, but there's something about uh, this this area that has brought so many different uh, backgrounds together. Um, you know, whether it's social, economic, you know, different backgrounds and things like that, or just uh, ethnic backgrounds. It's just it's really kind of a melting pot uh, on either side of the river, which is cool. Uh, yeah. Which I'm sure you're probably seeing uh, a little bit uh, now, especially uh, as you're, you know. Um, what do you call it? Grassroots organizing and do and door knocking and, sure, and all that sure. kind of stuff. You're you're meeting a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of differing opinions, uh, and you're trying to juggle all those things. Um, but uh, tell me about at what point did you realize you wanted to get into athletic training? I know I'm going back a lot, but um, I find that that really informs um, people in terms of like the, the decision making. Like you had mentioned that it was what inspired you to to want to make a change, make a difference. Um, so what what was it about that line of work that kind of originally appealed to you? Sure. So I actually originally went to college to be a teacher and oh, okay. changed my major. And yeah. then my grandma and my aunt, so my mom's mother and sister, both got sick at the same time. So I was out of college um, for almost two years okay. where I lived with them. And my aunt had lung cancer. And um, so I thought I wanted to be a physician's assistant right mm -hmm. before that had happened. And then after being in a, out of every hospital in Pittsburgh um, and just seeing the emotional um, toll it, right. you know, it can take. And so I knew I wanted to help people. I just wanted to have better outcomes without yeah. dealing with some of the more serious things. So sure. um, going into sports medicine was sort of the, the best way in terms of having the best of both. Yeah. Um, and also getting to work with a huge diverse group of people. Um, I'm so grateful for all the people I've worked with that have taught me, um, you know, about their lives, about where they came from. I've worked with student athletes from all other countries. I've been to France with a hockey team. I've just so cool. met really great people yeah. um, that, you know, people that were on the practice squad at the Steelers that are now on other teams that I can say, like, that was my first knee rehab or whatever. And so, yeah. you know, to see, um, not just to get to know them from an injury standpoint, but just to learn about who they are right. and, you know, where they came from. So I'm lucky that, uh, and I think for, you know, I always joke the transition to government is easy because um, power and money and egos are in high level sports. And yeah, it's also right. the same thing in the government, but also just, you know, um, taking care of people. It's this I'm now doing the same thing, just yeah. in a different capacity. Yeah, you're, you're offering or trying a chance to, to or try, yeah, attempting to rehabilitate. <laughs> Uh, something that may have atrophied or, or you know, that's a great analogy. Yeah. That's so, a great analogy. Um, yeah, like I would imagine too, like you're seeing in professional athletics, it's, it's one of the few arenas where someone can really um, improve their, their uh, financial situation and all of that plays into it. So then you have people who are not used to 
that type of lifestyle being thrust into it. And then you see some people respond really well, some people don't. Um, so that's another, that's a whole other uh, yeah. discussion that could happen is just people wrestling with that, you know, and then they have people that they're trying to take care of on their, that are, yeah. you know, that are all of a sudden those people come out of the woodwork that, hey, remember I did this mm -hmm. thing for you one time and now you have $6 million, uh, <laughs> time to repay me or whatever, you know. So yeah, I can imagine, uh, not that you were necessarily counseling people in that arena no, when but you were you guys, doing I that, spent but yeah, you, you're absorbing it. Yeah, yeah you're, you're experiencing that. Driving yeah. them around and learning about, you know, listening to what they and their families dealt with or, you know, if someone was mad about, you know, yeah. like, and you, you get to learn. And a lot of them, some, some of the athletes came from really rough upbringing, sure. so having... Um, you know, family structure was different for each one. Mm -hmm. um, some of the mo more heartbreaking and non-high profile places, you know, where kids just didn't have um, money to get shoes. They had ingrown toenails from the shoes being too small. So my husband and I go to the Nike outlet. Like, you're just yeah. little things that, like, kids can't control. Sure. Um, food insecurity, things like that. It's the same thing here. Yeah. You know, it's in, and I have one of the more wealthy Senate districts in the state. And I still have people who are food insecure and people who are struggling to make ends meet that, you know, that aren't homeless or, you know, there's a huge demographic that's still just getting by, like on yeah. that one extra paycheck, um, which is something I hope we can alleviate. Yeah. Tell me a little bit. Um, what is the uh, specific boundaries, I guess, of your district sure. and stuff, just because, you know, for people who don't really understand. Yeah. You know, like you had mentioned, uh, you know, people are like, oh, like vote for this for the federal government. Yes. They don't quite understand uh, those, uh, let people know, you know, where is it that you specifically do your work? Sure. So, um, I have Senate district 44, okay. which is part of Montgomery County, part of Chester County and part of Berks County. Okay. So it's a jaggedy puzzle piece. Um, I have a little <laughs> slice of Berks, just three townships. Okay. Um, and then I live here in Royersford. I go the whole way out to Worcester, West Norton, upper Providence, lower Providence, uh, Limerick, Collegeville, Lower Potts Grove. Um, then I have Spring City, East and West Vincent, the Brandywines, the Coventries, oh, wow. um, the Euclid, Upper Euclid, East Pikeland. Um, so um, I do not have the borough of Phoenixville or Pottstown Borough or Norris, Norristown Borough, but I have all of the surrounding areas of each of those oh, okay. three places. <laughs> yeah. um, so gerrymandering is uh, uh, what we call um, drawing district lines to keep um, certain people in office protect incumbent yeah. seats is uh, my district is a classic example of okay. a jaggedy puzzle. <laughs> Very jaggedy, so yeah. I'm one of 50 state senators. Okay. Um, there's 25 or up every two years. Okay. And so we have four year terms and we have state representative districts that also are underneath the Senate district sure. line. So I have nine state reps that overlap okay. my Senate district. Um, and yeah, so I'm not in the federal government. Yeah. We have two senators in the federal government. That right. is not me. Yeah. Um, and uh, we obviously have Congress uh, people that also represent us in Washington, sure. but that is not me. Okay. So, so uh, is uh, Representative Joe Cerisi He's, one of those? Yep, uh, he and who I was a former guest of Scar <laughs> Springford. I think it was episode. Uh, I'm drawing a blank, eight or something like that in season one. So go back and watch that. Sorry, I always, <laughs> anytime something that ties into a past episode, I always try to plug it. So people can, if they're just tuning in for the first time sure. watching Discover Spring Forward, uh, for you specifically, um, you know, it's my way of pulling them in, hopefully, to become loyal sure. viewers and listeners. So, um, yeah, so tell me now, because this is the part where I always find uh, that I glean the most information from, which is obviously you had seen all these things. And they had informed your views um, and your your beliefs uh, over time. Um, but what 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 moment was it where you just said, you know what, I enjoy athletic training, I enjoy what I'm doing, but I'm going to now take the next step. Like, what is that next step that you decided to take? Sure. So, um, following. Um the 2016 election, I definitely was very angry. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a rape survivor, so oh, okay. watching, um, you know, people vote for someone who is a predator was very difficult for me. Mm -hmm. So um, I also then realized uh, the lack of representation of just regular people in government. And I had been working with some of the 2017 municipal candidates that had ran for office and won in local races. And um, someone said, well, why don't you just run for Senate? And I don't know that I really knew what that meant yeah. at that moment. Um, I, I mean, know. in terms of the, 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 what, was it, how, what you had to do to get elected. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, sure, I guess that's fine. And um, so I came home and I said to my husband, um, I'm going to run for Senate. And he was like, okay. 
And um, often people ask like how we have that conversation, like how did we decide that it was me and not him, which right. is really funny conversation to have because there was never a conversation yeah. that, that said, well, is it going to be you that runs or me? And I think most people just reflexively assume a man yeah. would run for office. So um, I am the youngest Which kind person. of proves your point, it does. in a sense. It yeah. does. <laughs> so uh, I am the youngest person in the state Senate, so I just turned 36. Oh, wow. okay. So um, I had, uh, according to some, uh, no chance in hell of winning. And so, uh, but at that moment, it was really w who's calling the shots and like, what do we stand for? And mm -hmm. as you know, I have both of my grandfathers are veterans. My mom was a huge, um, she was so patriotic. We listened to like patriotic music on a little cassette player, or, like when she would bake in the kitchen. My mom loved all holidays. Yeah. But um, so I grew up with this sense of like giving back and like sticking up for others. And it was clear that like that's not what the government was doing. And so for me, it was just um, I should at least try, mm. uh, you know, to to make a difference in a bigger way than just, sure. you know, helping one team at a time. So um, that really was the catapult moment where I realized that uh, there's a lot of things that we still haven't done yet that we really right. need to do. Yeah, and like what what is the, like how do you officially, like so you didn't have any other like public office, I guess, no. up to this point. No. So like how do you start like um, the process? Do you say like you fill out a form that says, I would like to run for <laughs> so Pennsylvania State Senator. That's Center. a great question. Yeah. So um, I went to some candidate training. Not that I'm inquiring for no. any specific reason that no, it's I a good don't question. have any aspirations. Like, I but, mean, yeah. I didn't know what I was right. doing at the beginning either. So um, luckily there are a lot of candidate trainings that are available. Some are good, some aren't so great. I was fortunate enough to go to Washington, D.C. for a training by the Progressive Change Campaign Committee, so the PCCC, um, and they've run grassroots campaigns all over the country. Um, knocking doors, talking to people, beating out dark money, not, you know, relying mm -hmm. on TV ads and corporate packs to fund races and just talking about your message. Like, what are your values? And, and so had I not gone to that training, I probably would have quit um, because yeah. I was very overwhelmed on trying to yeah. navigate all these things. And they walked you through like how to build a campaign, like all these different things. And so my husband and I became very good at learning how to, you know, build Facebook pages and build out a website and do these things. And also you had to raise money. And so, as I mentioned, I don't have uh, a wealthy family that can just cut big checks. Right. And basically, when you're, you tell you know, you're the Democratic Party that you're going to run, they say, OK, we'll come back when you've raised X amount of money, like $50,000 <laughs> by December 2018 or something. So um, it took me six months to raise about $40,000. Um, my husband would call people for money when I was at work covering wow. basketball practice. We were calling um, only people in the district initially and getting $20 donations, being super excited about that. Yeah. And um, eventually we were able to get access to like a network that you could call statewide, which was helpful because a lot of donors are in cities. Sure. And none of this I knew, right? And so we somehow raised this money, um, <laughs> all, all small dollar donors, no special interest money. I'm the only person in the state center that has taken zero special interest wow. money, not from trial lawyers, not from any entity. Um, and so, I, through the PCCC, later endorsed me as a candidate, oh, as cool. the first person in Pennsylvania. And then um, they would send out emails to their network nationwide. So I have donors in 50 states that gave me two, three, four, five bucks. Um, <laughs> and so, and then obviously people here in Pennsylvania that supported me, um, um, some women-based organizations mm -hmm. or um, progressive movements. And really just um, the, the reason I believe our success is because we hit the we hit the ground we mm -hmm. knocked almost over 110,000 doors and we talked to voters of all party registrations not you know trying to just have that conversation you know and listen to what <clears throat> they were concerned about get their feedback and talk about who I was what my values were and or are and that really that human connection goes mm -hmm. a long way and most people never have their door knocked on yeah so it sort of catches you off guard but it's like hey i want to hear from you i want to know like what's what are you and your family dealing with yeah. and so that really went a long way and i'm lucky that i had an army of volunteers of over <laughs> 400 people to help me do that because you know we really wanted to tell people that you know we're not all that different from mm -hmm. one another and i think fairness and transparency and, and things like that are all things we agree on. Sure. So how do we make government, you know, go in that direction instead of, and, and not talk about things that are so partisan or, you know, polarized that, right. that really negate the real conversation. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that because I think that we focus a lot of our attentions on where we disagree. Um, 
and we don't realize. And then just for full disclosure, because this is a good segue, I was raised lifelong Republican. Mm -hmm. I'm now registered independent. I consider myself a libertarian. So government in general and I have an interesting relationship. Yeah. I'll just leave it at that. Um, but the ability to come and sit and have a conversation and get to hear somebody's heart about why they do what they do is so lost. Um, and it's very inspiring just to hear. That's why I love doing these conversations because it's so many different people, so many different viewpoints, so many different backgrounds but you get to the heart of the message, which I think is what is lost. Um, sure. So I, I appreciate you sharing so much um, just to hear your heart and, and what led you um, to get into uh, this arena because it's, uh, it's, it's ugly. The world is dog eat dog. <laughs> I don't know what the political world is. It's probably more like lion eat lion <laughs> uh, or uh, you know whatever the worst beast you can think of yeah. is. Um, so. Can you, uh, just that, this is just a question coming off the top of my head, like, it, are there any specific things you think of, like, you may get this question off often, but like, what's the most different about doing what you're doing now, like, than what you expected, I guess, or, or how different is it than you expected? Because there's nothing really that can prepare you no, until sure. you're doing it, but is there anything that stands out that on the top of your head, like, that's really different than what I thought it was gonna be? Yeah. I guess maybe naively, I thought that, um with new people in place, not just myself, but there were six other, excuse me, five other Democrats elected and there's some new and on the other side of the aisle too, um, that there would be some um, efforts to coordinate ourselves. And I think, and it may just be because Democrats have been in the minority in Harrisburg for so long before we, the six of us came in, there was just 16 of them. So you really are on defense and, yeah. and um, and this isn't partisan, this yeah. is just people's voting records, so yeah, I'm not right. trying to take <laughs> yeah. shots no, at, at the other side because you can look all this yeah. up, is that, and it's still the same, we're negotiating um, things, and now that we're 22 strong, we might not have the majority, but um, sometimes Democrats really play like losers. And so yeah. if you don't give people a reason like to come out and vote for you, why do you assume that we're just going to get the votes? Mm -hmm. And I think for me, what you say about your, you know, political history, mm -hmm. um, people don't trust the government and you really shouldn't. Yeah. And, and I say that yeah. as someone who's in it yeah. and that every day there's something new. Like I knew there was corruption, yeah. but like then there's something where you're just like, <laughs> and, and, and the hardest part is, is it's internally regulated. Yeah. So the House and Senate, for example, have no outside entity that can intervene, that we have no oversight. We make hmm. our own rules, really the majority party. And if it were the Democrats, yeah. it's the same thing. Yeah. The majority party runs the show. They run the calendar. You could have the greatest bill in the world and they don't care. It will yeah. die in committee because they're not going to run it. Yeah. And so a lot of it becomes, and I, and I guess I, I assume there'd be negotiations. I, yeah. I got that part of it. But when it's off the back of people yeah. directly when you could have done better, yeah. I'm still navigating how to deal with that yeah. frustration because it's it really does eat your soul at night. Like, yeah. Because you know that this is this body of people that could have passed a really great bill and instead you did like a half-ass effort yeah. um, and then you're going to go talk about it so you can get reelected. And I'm not, you know, campaign Katie and Senator Katie are the same human. We yeah. don't have different uh, slogans. We right. don't have, <laughs> and that's not the norm. And I think for me, um, what I'm doing with you now is what I do with Republican colleagues, sit down yeah. and have conversations <laughs> at lunch. And there are some that are very kind and talk about their family. And, a, and there are some Democrats that are like that. And then, I mean, your voting record, your voting record. Yeah, right. <laughs> so like that, you have to own it. You have to yeah. be prepared. And, and same for me. I have to be prepared to say this is why I did or didn't. I've taken some no votes on Democratic bills because they were garbage. Yeah. And we settled and they, we should have done better. And mm. so... Um, that's always going to be me, and I'm grateful that I have a district that elected me yeah. on that on those on those values. Is sure. that I'm going to tell you the truth, and it may be messy, and it may not be what you want to hear, but like, and if I don't know all the information, I'm going to go find it, sure. and so that I can explain it to everybody else because it's really really difficult to work in a government where ultimately leadership, which is the title given to some, um, doesn't mean you're a leader, yeah. but um, you know, they call the shots. I mean, nine men essentially decide the budget in Pennsylvania. Yeah. The governor and leadership from both chambers, from both parties. So it's like, when you're a state senator reading about a charter school getting written to the public school code in July in the Philadelphia Inquirer, 
and even though I voted no on a really crappy budget and I read <laughs> everything in that budget, everything, my staff um, is amazing. We're all new, but you know, we go the extra mile. We're sure. up researching things. We don't want to make an error. We don't want to be the status quo office. And so when you're reading things like, well, how the hell did that get in there? I'm a sitting senator and I didn't know. And that's really frustrating. So when I say I understand where people come from by not trusting the government, <laughs> I'm right there with you. And, and, yeah. I, and I'm hopeful that you know, with new energy coming in that we can change that because it really does not have to be that way. And it wasn't designed to no, be that way, to be you know, that either, and yeah. government should protect and help people not cut deals and, um, yeah. you know, and, and do the shady business. It's, it is very frustrating. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as we wrap up, uh, what is it, what has it been like in the public eye? Obviously, um, when you get elected, uh, and you've experienced this for a specific political party. People assume that you walk the party line. You you hold to every value that every other Democrat or Republican has, uh, and then people label you, and they, um, you know, who knows? We'll probably maybe get some negative comments below this video, even. Um, <laughs> yeah, and just so it's like I'm not taking a political stance here by interviewing one party or another. Uh, it just so happens that she was fortunate enough to approve my interview. <laughs> like I, I'm seriously willing to sit down with anybody. Um, but, well, that's um, the beauty of it. I represent yeah, the whole right. district. It's not just Democrats. Yeah, exactly. And so, right. um, unfortunately, in a two-party system here in Pennsylvania, um, running as an independent is very difficult. But yeah, when you right. think about <laughs> where we're going, um, you know, if it's the truthfulness of both sides sure. is really what we're fighting for. Just you know, this, this total revolution of yeah. changing the game and and I think that's why this district although it's gerrymandered and I have scattered all over the place I'm I I love this yeah. district I love the people in it they're very nice to me I might have accumulated a handful of um, non fans or trolls but yeah. um, they can't say that I'm never I'm not accessible sure. or that I don't want to have those conversations so yeah. I appreciate you taking the time oh, because yeah. it's not, not, a, not a you know no matter who you are whether you voted for me or not I still have an obligation to to you know be a public servant and yeah and you know you can take you, I'm sure you're learning this that the trolls are going to be there regardless <laughs> I mean you could literally turn around and change every view that you had and you would still the same people would still you have a troll you know like, yeah. yeah and uh, you know something as innocuous as doing a a local interest web series, you know, creates trolls, which is kind of hilarious. It's yes, like, it because there's people in their basement somewhere, yes. uh, with a keyboard, keyboard uh, muscles. Yeah. Yes. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, like I guess, like as a as a a family person, you have to concern yourself with like, you know, processing all this stuff, this attention. Has that been difficult to go from you know private citizen to public sector or? I mean, I think, you know, for me, I, I don't have any skeletons, so sure. it's a little, maybe yeah. for others, this is harder. Yeah. Um, I think my husband and I have embraced our new role in that they're, like you at the beginning had mentioned, like, what do you volunteer, free time, and your job? Sure. Those have all intersected into one thing yeah. to me. So um, a good day for me is going to the Chester County Food Bank as much as I wish one didn't have to exist, but to see how many great people are there, mm. the programs they're doing, teaching people how to cook, um, that are you know formerly incarcerated or had you know a, a difficult history and and getting them set up I, those are my favorite days because it gives me hope and then um, I, I those are the people that I remind myself when I don't like uh, some of the you know negative attention and I I've, uh, I think when you're willing to tell the truth you're all you're gonna have more than the average yeah. trolls and I think that um, that's something that uh, I can't compromise on because mm -hmm. if I don't do that, then I'm not me and I'm not doing what I said I was gonna do. Right. And I also don't know what else I would do. I, yeah. I don't know that sitting in discontent is and just being angry and <laughs> sitting there is like not someone who wants to change it. I feel like I'm enabling that status quo. So yeah. um, for me being in the public eye, most of, um, most of it has been really positive, again, minus the, the trolls, which I've now you know, censored myself to social media uh, check-ins every two days or something and have yeah. someone screen my page for things. Because it is, um, you don't want to read bad things about yourself. Yeah. Uh, it can be, but at the same time, you know, feedback is helpful. Yeah. And if there's a certain issue that's coming up, and most people have come to me, even if we don't agree on something, with, with um, you know, good, Good dialogue. Yeah, There's right. no one really, you know. So um, I think being, I like, you know, being able to go grocery shopping and, um, you know, someone says, "Hey, thanks for doing that. I saw you on wherever." And it's like at least, you know, that'll that's always a nice feeling. Yeah. Um, so I mean, really, I, I'm I'm grateful that you know I've gotten 
good good support. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> I know I saw a, a viral video. And uh, I was like, that's the lady I saw at Community Day. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. crazy, you know? Like, it doesn't always happen. So it's always exciting that, you know, whether it's for a good reason or a bad reason, I guess. Um, well, in that it's instance, easier. again, yeah, right. telling the truth yeah, right. really <laughs> raised a ruckus. So, it really you know, did. It's, it's, you um, guys can Google that if you want to. I'm sure it's very easy to find. Um, but uh, that, and then you guys can allow that to inform your opinions as well. Sure. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you so much. This sure. is great. And I, like, as I said, like, uh, I didn't want to come and do like some type of you know journalistic like I I you know where do you stand on these because honestly like I am so uh, we can have yeah. part two on that yeah like, right <laughs> if you really want to get into it yeah because yeah. <laughs> I'm sure like we would find every point that to disagree on this or that or whatever but I just love hearing people's hearts because that's where you know you know that people are coming from whatever you may disagree with whatever the thing is. Um, that they're deciding, but to hear why they're deciding it, and that there's a, a thought process and a love and a and a um, a reason behind it. I think it's like you can't argue that. You really can't. Like, and I, you know, for you know, there are so many things that I could tell you why I feel this way or that way on a particular issue, and you know, it's it's the truth that I've come to experience and live. And thank you so much for sharing your experience because Absolutely. I think that really informs um, who you are as a woman today and, and how you've gotten to the, the status that you've received. And hopefully, you know, depending on what your aspirations are going forward, you know. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> work in the state I can Senate. imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lots I, of work to do. I kind of, yeah, I, I really, uh, I appreciate you clarifying that too because I feel like, you know, and I, when I talk to Joe Cerisi, similar thing, it's like, you know, the local area of government, there's so much to do and so much more change than I think you can really affect. Um, and 80% and, and of your life is impacted by local government. Exactly. So, yeah. So, um, like, down to look at, you know, zoning, stormwater drainage, cost of, you know, education, all of these things are state level things and federal chaos sometimes yeah. can take everybody's attention away. And I mean, there's things I'm learning every single day about this job and about government and that it's helpful to come back and share it with everyone else because it's not, um, it's not always easily accessible. There are things I've suggested to make updates to, you know, in Harrisburg that would have greater outreach and give people, you know, more of an opportunity to, to see what is happening because some people just don't know. And, right. um, and that's not unfair. I think people are, you know, people are living their lives and, and, and I hope they become more engaged citizens, yeah, right. you know, like I did. But, you know, it's it's part of this job is listening to everybody. That's how I make decisions. Right. And, and having that um, be a part of it is, is um, it's huge. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. I think we, yeah, we definitely look at the red and blue a little bit too much when you realize, like, if we could all kind of find a common ground, we would make a lot more progress. We'd be like a rainbow. Yeah. It'd be, great. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be a beautiful sunset with many hues and colors. And no. <laughs> well, I do think yeah. there's a way to make a, a fair system and, sure. and have accountability. And, um, you know, people work really hard and uh, they work their whole lives and don't have the same resources as some people that are in government. And so how do we level that yeah. playing field? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just... Sorry, I keep saying we're going to wrap up, but then so you say something that makes me want to ask another question. I think it's important that you mention, because you had mentioned some of the things that, just in, in passing, you had said you didn't want to use taxpayer money on that or this or that. So um, I, I did want to ask, because you obviously work in Harrisburg, but you live in Royers Ford. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I commute an hour to work. Um, that's two and a half hours probably, right? Or how far? Um, how it's long? about an hour and 20 minutes oh, is it? one way. I'm thinking of, yep. uh, yeah, so round trip. Yep. Um, so um, how do you how do you balance that? As <laughs> so, uh, you know, we as electeds can collect per diem um, for each day that we're in Harrisburg. And this year I took the full per diem mainly because I didn't have a job. I, right. I quit my job in August of 2018 to finish off my campaign. So I did work full time throughout most of my campaign, wow, which yeah. was very challenging. Um, but mainly because knowing that we would be putting in a new office and I don't like to um, put, re you know, reimbursements for th everything. Like, right. you know, you get a new, every senator gets an office and we tried to, I really pushed to be as frugal as possible. Some of our furniture up front is from Ikea. We yeah. don't need mahogany tables and, right. <laughs> and all these things. And um, it's great that we were able to renovate a place that hadn't been vacant for a really long time sure, yeah, from I a revitalization that. standpoint. But, you know, I actually don't stay in a hotel when I go to Harrisburg. 
Um, I stay in an apartment with another state representative so that um, we're not spending that much money every night as a hotel. So right. we just pay a monthly amount in rent. And it's actually the in-laws of another state representative who live oh, in right. Harrisburg and they have an apartment off the back of their townhouse. So we live there and it's right across the street from the Capitol. Oh, nice. um, so it's very convenient. So and we have other you know, elected stay over if they came in early or, you know, stay an extra day. So, um, and we really try to carpool and, and, you know, do things like that with, as a staff, cause you know, it's not just me driving around. We have a staff part in Harrisburg here, you know, we have remote office hours. So, um, any extra money for per diems, you know, that we accumulate, I mean, we've, we've helped people in, you know, just with extraordinary circumstances, if they, um, some other program didn't fill the void or we know that we're going to have, you know, like we're having a vet a veterans expo this Thursday, um, you know, that helps offset the cost of some of that stuff. I don't take corporate donations of any capacity. So for me to even have an event, um, many electeds have breakfasts and things that are corporate sponsored and I, I won't do that. So um, trying to just, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's still taxpayer money, but uh, um, it's put to a better use. Right. And, you know, we we try really hard to um you know be a community for the, the this office to be open to everybody it's we have family friendly office hours we try to make it inviting and warm and not institutional and sure. just you know and and um I, I think that's part of the vibe is that it's um you know we don't have we're not wasting dollars doing right. you know expensive things and lunches and things that are maybe <laughs> legal or not against the rules but that's not how we roll yeah. here <laughs> well as a libertarian, I, I do that. That that scratches an itch of mine, so I appreciate you sharing. Sure, that. sure, sure. Uh, and there's enough. Limiting government you know, spending is, uh, is well, great. and so, you know, it's, yeah. we got a job to do. You yeah, know, right. and that's what I was elected to do. And I'm yep. and my you know my team is great at constituent services. We help people even outside of this district. Um, you know, we do whatever. If we can't directly help, we find the resource, which is important because not everybody knows where to go you know, for certain things. And nine chances out of 10, there's a program already established for someone they just didn't know. Yeah. Or it's, you know, again, it could be something that happens suddenly and, you know, you need to help a family or, or whatever. But we've great, had great partnerships with different organizations doing food drives, school donation, or school supply donation drives. I mean, this office has been full of, of stuff and, and, you know, it's great to go distribute that out, but hopefully we come to a day hopefully in the near future where we don't need, you know, right. um, so many organizations to step up where the government fails to fill mm -hmm. the voids, you know? Right. <laughs> no, I hear that. Big and goal, I, big picture. I know, uh, <laughs> I definitely would, you know, uh, the, in my opinion, the, the, what the government stands for and does, um, the more people we can have there that understand the value of a dollar, I think that that's where we're and how to make it stretch. Uh, I think it, it, we'd be in a good spot. So thank you so much Spend for your efforts. Right yeah, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a novel idea. Um, so uh, thank you so much for your efforts Absolutely. and for putting yourself essentially in front of the firing line. Um, <laughs> it's not a it's I'm not an enviable to task. <laughs> yeah, it's not an enviable task. And there's a lot of people that would would much rather um, share a video or comment on a post. Uh, and think they're doing their part and not actually enter the fray. So I, I give you um, great kudos for, for being willing to do that. Um, so thank you so much for your service. Really appreciate sure. it. Um, as we wrap up, I've said for the fourth time, um, tell people how they can get in touch with you, where they can find uh, information about your, uh, about your uh, I guess it's not a campaign anymore, but um, you know what you're doing, how people can support the efforts that you're undertaking in the state Senate. Uh, and the best way to reach you? Sure. So my website is senatormuth.com. Um, all my social media tags, which is Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, are at Senator Muth. Um, so keep it simple. And I encourage you to follow me. Um, it's good. I try to keep people updated on what's happening in Harrisburg and what's happening in the district. Um, our, our website has all of our office hours, remote office hours, any events. If you want to sign up for text alerts, we don't blow up your phone. We just send <laughs> the important things. We have a, um, a bi-weekly um, e-blast that goes out um, that you can sign up for as well, like just a rundown of what's happening. And uh, we send out a quarterly mailed newsletter um, to everyone as well. So any of those things and or if there's suggestions you have we're open to what else you want information on we'd be you know glad to to add that in too awesome well thank you so much i really appreciate it 
Well, that's all the time we have for today's episode of Discover Springford. I want to thank Senator Muth for her time today and for her candor, both on and off screen. I also want to thank you for watching. I really enjoy being able to sit down with people from all walks of life, from all differing viewpoints, and I would appreciate civility in the comments below. If you would like to know more about Senator Muth, you can click the links below the video. If you would like to support Discover Springford going forward, you can do that in a number of ways. You can share this video with your friends and family, or you can support us through Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Thanks a lot for watching. Come back next time for more of what makes the Springford area a great place to live, work, eat, and explore.